Hey everybody, I missed sending you YouTube videos, so here's a quick one for today. Uh, this is the great intro to the great tune Love Struck Baby by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Here's what it sounds like a little bit slower than the original. Okay, so I'll walk you through the mechanics of it, but stick around because I'll also teach you how you can use this type of uh, a rock and roll blues skill for your only guitar solos, okay? So here's what's going on. Little bar at 12, the two skinny strings at 12 with your index finger. I'm gonna hit those seven times, seven upstrokes. Your ring and middle are gonna reach up as a pair. Ring finger 15, middle finger 14. You're gonna hit that little double stop. These are called double stops, by the way. And Give a little bend up towards your chin. Just a little bend. Don't overdo it. Okay, so we have seven upstrokes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now what we just did here reflect an E7 chord. That's going to make more sense in a minute. Back two frets to 10 and 10 with your index. Four upstrokes. And that same reach with a bend. Now it's going to be ring finger 13, first string, middle finger 12, second string. Okay, another upstroke there towards your chin, all upstrokes so far. Finally, oh by the way, that just reflected a D7 chord. And finally, the A chord. One upstroke, five and five. Same reach, eight first string, ring finger, seven second string, middle finger. Okay, so a single upstroke and then five more, and then watch this. Back to the five, five, zero, zero, meaning the two open strings, two uh, skinny strings open, fat string open, and then lastly, a great E7 chord. You know what this E7 voicing is? It's a C chord turned into a C7. You know your C7 chord? It's a C chord with the pinky third string, third fret. Glide that up four frets. Okay, so it was a C7. Steve Ray Vaughan makes it an E7 right here. Okay, that is index second string five, pinky third string seven, middle finger fourth string six ring finger, fifth string, seven. And that's an E7 chord, okay? Now, so far we have the mechanics here, right? And that's great, and go ahead and practice that. But now stick around for one more minute, and let's talk about what's going on. This intro is, in effect, it's like a turnaround. Could also be an outro to a tune. It's the five chord, E7, going to the four chord, D7, going to the one chord, A7, and finally ending up on the five chord again, the E7. He's using it as an intro, but he may well be using this song later in the tune, uh, this riff later in the tune as, uh, as a turnaround as well. You could certainly use it that way. All right, so don't worry too much about the five and the four and the one. We're in the key of A, you know, officially the A7 is the one chord, that's the key they're in. The D7 is the four chord, the E7 is the five chord. But what I really want you to get out of this video in these last few seconds we have here is if you are, if you need a bluesy rock and roll riff on top of a specific chord, right? All you need to do is know the name of that chord. In this case, let's say E7. Find the E on the skinny string, happens to be 12. Add in his partner in crime right next to it, 12 on the second string. You've got a great little double stop there. And the only thing that sounds better than that is reaching up like Stevie Ray Vaughan does to that great little bendy double stop. So, okay, that sounds great while the rest of the band is on the E7 chord. Random thing, let's say the band is playing a G or G7 in a rocky blues kind of context, okay? This is a hypothetical. G, third fret on the first string. That's my G right there, you know that, right? Add in its little partner in crime right next to it. Okay. My bendy little reachy double stop up there. And it's going to be ring finger on six. It's always three frets higher. Did you get that pattern? 
ring finger on six if my index is on three, middle finger on five if my index is on three. So we have... Okay, see how that works? If you know the name of the background chord in this blues rock kind of context, you find the root note of that chord on your skinny string. In this case, hypothetical G7 chord in the background, grab your G, right? You've got that double stop, which sounds great, but doesn't it sound even better when it has a, a partner to go to? There you go. All right, so that's how you can take this riff and use it in, uh, in your own solos. But thanks to Steve Ray Vaughan for this great example. Now, before I forget, I'm filming lots of videos for my new website. My new website is almost ready to go. Can you read that? www.song-bike.com. It's almost ready for you guys. Uh, to find out the updates about exactly when it's going to be good to go, please like my Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash mysongbike. Can you read that? I'm sure you can. All right, so that website is coming at you very soon, and uh, I can't wait to show it to you all. I've been filming tons of new videos for it, and uh, it's looking great. Right now we're basically putting the final touches on it, testing it out so it works great for you folks. All right, everybody, don't forget to like this video and comment on it and subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel if you have not subscribed already. And uh, look for more videos coming your way. Thanks for watching.